Hey y'all, um, I wanted to introduce to you a plant that's medicinal and edible and at the very end of its growing season so you can harvest it before it's gone. Um, and it's goldenrod. So a lot of people think they know goldenrod. Um, a lot of people have seen it. They're at least familiar with it from like roadsides and stuff. But a lot of people think that this is the plant responsible for their fall allergies. And that's actually not true. Um, the culprit tends to be ragweed. The reason is, is because goldenrod's pollen is actually pretty heavy. So when it produces its pollen, it tends to just fall to the ground and it's not really wind dispersed. Ragweed is though. Um, so that tends to be the, the uh, culprit. Goldenrod is actually pretty benign and it's been used as food and medicine for quite a long time. So before we get into that, let's talk about identification really quick because um, there are a few other plants that you could misidentify this with. Uh, one of them is ragweed. Um, I won't get into like identification of its lookalikes. You can look into those, um, just get positive ID on this. But one of the lookalikes is ragweed. Another one that is actually poisonous is um, arrow leaf ragwort. Ragweed is actually medicinal in its own way, um, in a different way, in a different form. So goldenrod, um, you, it's pretty characteristic that it's uh, flower cones at the top here will be in like a pyramid or triangular shape. This can be really helpful when you're looking at it from afar. Um, you see there's some more over here. When you're looking at it from afar, this can be helpful to say like, oh, I wanna get closer to that. Um, I think that's goldenrod and I wanna use that. Um, so it'll look like a, a pyramid from afar. The leaves are alternate on the stem, which means they're just crisscrossing their way up the stem. They're not directly across from each other. They're like taking turn, turns up the stem. And they're gonna have a pretty prominent vein on the underside. It'll be like raised and exposed. Um, there's a lot of different species of goldenrod. Most of them are used interchangeably. I believe this is a gray goldenrod, but something you'll see with all species is that the leaf margin, which the margin is just a fancy way of seeing the edge of the leaf, the leaf margin is smooth and entire. So no crazy jagged places, no like bumps or lobes or anything like that, it's, it's smooth. Another thing that you'll see with mature goldenrod, which this is quite an, like a pretty small one, so it's not as evident here, but you will tend to see that at the bottom, kind of see it here, the leaves will turn gray and they'll fall off. And then you'll get the biggest leaves in the middle and smaller, smaller leaves near the top. Also with mature goldenrod, you will see um, like a single stalk, a single stem will be coming up from the base and it can stalk up at the top. Um, we're not seeing that here, but it can. Okay, so how can you use this plant? There's a lot of different ways, actually. Uh, in the Revolutionary War, this plant was actually used as a replacement for black tea, because it's a lot harder to get a hold of that in America. Um, it is not caffeinated the way black tea is, but it is stimulating in a different way. So people described it as being really helpful for combating fatigue and actually for depression too. And if you think about uh, modern life, the two tend to go really hand in hand, not just in chronic diseases um, like Hashimoto's, for example, but you know you tend to see those hand in hand in like vitamin D deficiency, B12 deficiency, um, you know, mental health issues, depression, like causing fatigue and vice versa. So that's what that was used for. They would dry the whole plant. So like the stem, the leaves, the flowers, dry that and use that as uh, tea. Um, the leaves themselves can be used uh, as food. So you can boil the leaves in water or you could saute them and then like cook them and consume them very similarly to spinach. The flowers are also edible. These are actually edible raw. Obviously you're not getting a whole lot from the flowers or the leaves, but if you found a big clump of these, you'd be in pretty good shape. Um, medicinally, cute dog. Medicinally, you can use this uh, dried as a tea, fresh as a tea, or as a tincture, which is an alcohol extraction of herbs. So 
as a T, this is gonna be really helpful for UTIs and sinus congestion especially, and it actually tastes really good. Um, and it's also going to have that fatigue boosting factor and, and just be like a nice tasting thing. Um, so, and if that were the case, you would dry, you know, the leaves and the flowers. You can use a dehydrator, you can use a screen outdoors and dry this. As a tincture, um, this is one of my favorite things to use for allergies, incidentally, because um, it's one of the things that a lot of people think causes the allergies. This is not homeopathy. This is just, this is just one of the plants that work. So for a tincture for allergies, I use this fresh. So I do a fresh maceration of this. We can get into like how to make tinctures in another time or in a class. Um, the root is also used medicinally. Uh, you can make something called a decoction, which is just where you take the root and you simmer it. It's really helpful for intestinal cramps. Um, not my favorite thing to use. There's a lot of other herbs that are more effective, but if this is all you had, this would work. So this is goldenrod. Um, it's obviously at the very end of its growing season. It's not looking super bright and vital. There's not a whole lot of it left, but uh, y'all, you know, if you see it and you want to harvest it, definitely should experiment with this. Just make sure you get positive ID, like I said before. And on, on that note, um, I am teaching another class with Fieldcraft Survival. So the last one went really, really well. We got a ton of positive feedback and a lot of people who said like they wish they had been in town or they wish they had known about it. So we're doing another one. It's October 23rd. Um, it's the same place in Hoffman, North Carolina from nine to three. And yeah, I'm going to teach y'all everything that I know about plant identification, how to identify plant families, toxic plants to avoid, and how to identify those. Um, the most common medicinal and edible plants of the Southeast, um, especially if you're looking to find your North Carolina natives, this would be a really good place to start. Um, and then we're gonna go outside for like two or two and a half hours and do a plant walk and meet all of the plants that are in season right now that you can use medicinally, edibly. Um, some of them are really amazing for like other survival mechanisms. So fire starting and um, cordage and stuff like that, shelter. So y'all come out. I would absolutely love to have you. I'm stoked that we're doing another one this fall. We're gonna be doing more of these in the new year, but I think this is the last one for autumn plants. So if you're interested in this, you can check that out. The link is in my bio. It's also on fieldcraftsurvival.com. And I really hope to see you there.